Hello and thanks for joining us on Encore. Coming up on today's show. Cinema comes to La Serenissima. Venice welcomes the stars of the big screen as the floating city hosts its annual film festival. Getting a taste of the action on the ground, Game of Thrones fans flock to the latest shooting location, Northern Ireland, as the series makes avid tourists of its viewers. And Dutch photographer Ed van der Elskin brings us a poignant view of the margins of mid-century society in a retrospective here in Paris. We're starting the show in Venice, where the oldest film festival in the world is in full swing. The stars are disembarking on the Lido this week for the Mostra. Ethan Hawke and Amanda Seyfried were on the red carpet for the drama First Reformed, while Guillermo del Toro was there to present The Shape of Water. His latest release is something of a fantastic fairy tale, featuring an aquatic creature and a mute leading lady. Let's hear from him. It's a movie set in 1962, but it's a movie about today. It's about the issues we have today. I mean, uh, when, when America talks about America being great again, I think they are dreaming of an America that was in gestation in 62. Uh, an America that was futuristic, uh, full of promise, full of this and that, but at the same time, there was racism, sexism, uh, classism. And as well as the features on offer, documentaries are also on the bill. Among the factual films in selection this year, Ai Weiwei is presenting Human Flow, a meditation on the global refugee crisis that he filmed in 23 different countries. The Chinese artist says he wants to offer another perspective on the reality for migrants going beyond the journalistic coverage of the crisis. I jumped into this topic in refugee situation. I tried almost desperately to make a shout, to make my voice to be heard. Here, look at here, what's happening. But I realized that's not enough for myself to understand the topic. The topic is so broad and has such deep history and in such a complex situation. Not only a small screen phenomenon, it's also a boon for tourism. Game of Thrones fans are flocking to the locations where the series was filmed, and the latest site is in Northern Ireland. After Spain, Iceland and Croatia, it's the latest place to benefit from the worldwide popularity of the saga. Alison Sargent has more. They're invading Northern Ireland in droves, armed with swords, fur-lined capes, and their fiercest battle cries. <laughs> For this group of tourists, these ruins date back not to the 12th century, but to a whole other world. So we're here on vacation, and we're from the United States, and we came here to come on the Game of Thrones tour. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. With over a dozen filming locations in Northern Ireland, the itinerary is packed. A pilgrimage that attracts tourists from all over the world who want to step inside their favorite series. Game of Thrones is one of the most popular television shows on the planet. At its heart is the struggle for the Iron Throne and the power to rule over the Seven Kingdoms. A fantastical saga filmed in some very real places, like Winterfell Castle, known in real life as Castle Ward, or the rocky coast of the Iron Islands. For this French family, the series has become a new way to travel. We've entered the scene. Walking down to the beach, I thought, who am I welcoming? I don't know, maybe Greyjoy. I'm in the show. And it's really thanks to the show that we're discovering Ireland. It's a sort of bridge between us. Everywhere they go, there are references to the series. Even a dinner out is a chance to conquer the Iron Throne. I read the books first, and I found the characters really interesting, and I got into it. I'm going to make Eve read them. I think he'll be a fan as well. Why not? 
As it's spread, Game of Thrones fever has transformed the region's tourism industry. Some 30 tour operators now offer guided visits and all kinds of activities. For 150 euros, you can pet the series' so-called wolves. For 30 more, you can try your hand at archery. It's been a bullseye for Northern Ireland's economy. Game of Thrones has brought in 140 million euros in the past seven years and created more than 1,000 jobs. Game of Thrones is massive for me, it's massive for everyone here. In the winter time, you'll see me on Game of Thrones shooting arrows, hacking people to death with a sword, and in the summertime, you'll see me doing the tours, teaching people how to shoot arrows and showing them this beautiful country that we have. For a final stop on the tour, one of the series' most iconic settings. Known as the Dark Hedges, they've been nothing but bright for Northern Ireland's tourism sector. Last year, the country welcomed a record four million visitors. Next, we're bringing you music direct from Detroit. Jay Daniels, an emerging techno and house DJ and producer who's been dubbed one of the bright new stars of the dance music scene. On the decks and on tour this summer, our music editor, Richelle Harrison-Pless, met him at the We Love Green Festival here in Paris. Synonymous with Motown, Detroit is known for its rich musical legacy. But the Motor City is also known as the birthplace of techno. Up-and-coming DJ, producer and musician Jay Daniel is part of a new generation of beatmakers taking Detroit's pulsating rhythms to all four corners of the globe. For Daniel, music is a family affair. His mother Naomi was the voice of 90s house classics like Feel the Fire. Yep, well, my mom, she's a singer. Um, she sang on a popular house track called Stars that came out in 1993 and it's produced by Carl Craig. And uh, my dad is a drummer, so I've always been around music, you know, like in the house. People, my mom and my dad listen to different types of music, Jimi Hendrix, P-Funk, Prince, all types of stuff. And, you know, Detroit has such a rich musical legacy anyways. So it was just like always stimulated and, you know, kind of motivated and inspired to, uh, to do whatever music. At this summer's We Love Green Festival in Paris, Jay Daniels' modern techno sounds had everyone on the dance floor. I found the music great. I love Detroit techno, so like all that kind of stuff, I really like it. It's been my favourite stage so far. Everybody's dancing, there's a really great atmosphere, everybody's really into it. On his debut album, Broken Nose, Daniel uses his skills as a percussionist to fuse live drums with beats and samples moving seamlessly between the roles of DJ, producer and musician. Instead of separating, you know, just look at all, look at it all as music, you know, and don't look at it as house music and then like funk and, you know what I'm saying, just kind of put throw it in a melting pot and make it part of my artistry, I guess. Artists like Jay Daniel are proof that Detroit's beats are still booming. We're moving now to a retrospective that takes us inside the eye of an influential photographer and brings us a singular view on life in the 20th century. Ed van der Elskin is famed for romanticising simple, everyday moments from the streets of Paris to rural towns in Japan. Renaud Lefort and Jessica Sesterly went to Paris's Jeux de Pomme gallery to check it out. Ik maak Intimate moments of urban life. Ed van der Elsken's love affair with the camera began in post-war Paris, trailing a group of young vagabonds as they drifted through the city's left bank in hazy cafes on dark street corners to catch a glimpse of the stirrings of young love, recklessness and rebellion. He loves their moment of passion and he records that and he has a great ability to be close and uh, sympathetic in that moment of uh, revolt which will last for only a short time. His photos show so many different cultures and realities. It's like he picks a place and waits for something to happen. His shots are tightly framed. There's an intense blackness in his photos. Tight frames and a deep blackness, two of his trademark techniques which he'd used to produce photos with an almost cinema-like feel to them, a radical shift from the optimistic photorealism of the time. Van der Elsken also played with colour, like in this series on Japan. His photos covered the entire world, but the country always held a certain importance for him. He returned there some 15 times over the span of 20 years. 
The question of the gaze is very important in his Japan series. That is, how the photographer regards his subjects and how they regard him. There's one section on a more traditional Japan and another on a more modern Japan. That one features marginal, non-conformist protests, which he especially liked. In his hometown of Amsterdam, he filmed passers-by to provoke their instant reaction. An inspiration for many, like world-class photographers Larry Clark and Nan Golden. Van der Elsken aimed to expose the real essence of life, right up to his departure from it, the 28th of December, 1990. That exhibition will be running until the 24th of September. We'll leave you with another exhibition, and this one's a little further afield. Jerusalem Lives is the inaugural show at the Museum of Palestinian History, Culture and Society. The institution officially opened in the town of Bir Zayt near Ramallah last year, but this is the first time it's open to visitors with a collection of work documenting the Israeli occupation of East Jerusalem. For more arts and culture, do remember to check out our website and you can also keep up with Encore on social media. There's more news coming up on France 24 after this.